Welcome to our moon wreath tutorial. Hello, hello, it's Gail Lupa here. Materials and links to this project are in the description below. For our Hoo Hoo Moon wreath, we will begin by creating a crescent moon. We are starting with a 14 inch wreath frame from the Dollar Tree. Where you saw my hands going across, we're gonna cut it right at the top, right before that wire there, so that way we can pinch those wires together to make a point. And we're gonna be doing the same thing at the bottom. We're taking out two sections all together. So the two sections will be complete, whereas the other sections will not be complete. In other words, they're open on the ends. Now we're going to the next set of vertical wires close to the open ends to cut right in the center. And this is so we can squeeze the wires together so that we can get that really nice crescent moon shape. So we're gonna tape the ends together with duct tape and then form points with the duct tape on the ends. Where the wires were cut in the center, the wires stick up a little bit. So now I'm taking a hammer or a mallet just to pound it down a little bit to flatten it out. It's not completely flattened, but it's flattened out enough that there's no sharp points sticking upward. After the wires are flattened, I'm taking duct tape to tape over those edges as well to make it as smooth as possible. Now for the thumb part, which is covering the moon in mesh tubing. The mesh tubing is bought at the Dollar Tree and I'm using the burlap color tubing. I like to use a glue gun that has a nice point on the end so I can be very precise with where I apply the glue. I'm applying a generous amount of glue on the end and beginning to wrap the mesh around the end. And if you can see, when you're wrapping the mesh around, it looks thick at the beginning, but you can make it a lot thinner by just stretching it out as you wrap around. What's really cool about this is since the inside will take less material than the outside, you can pull it tight on the inside and then loosen up a little bit and flatten it out on the outside to really get that nice crescent shape. At first, I wasn't sure that the tubing would work, but it works wonderfully. It is thicker than twine and yarn, and it goes fairly quick when you start to wrap around. Another bonus is you are creating areas where you can stick picks through and create a really secure foundation for those picks. So not only will we use hot glue to glue them on, we'll stick the heavier picks inside the tubing to give it more added support. Here you can see how I'm applying glue and pulling the mesh tubing tight on the inside, holding it with my thumb, and then flattening it out a little bit on the outer edge to make it wider so it goes around that crescent shape at an angle that coincides with the crescent moon shape itself. It will take two packages of the mesh tubing to finish the crescent design. You can see I just finished up one here on the end and I press the end inside the hollow area so that it is hidden. Just like I hid the end, I'm hiding the beginning of the next package of tubing as well. I'm just placing it inside the shallow area, holding it down with my finger and creating a bend so that it wraps around seamlessly as if it's all one piece. I will continue to wrap the tubing around until I reach the end. Once I get to the end, I decided that I was going to wrap it back loosely on top of the moon. Another idea is to fold the tubing in a little bit and then finish wrapping it at the end. Here's the front side and the back side of the crescent moon. I found this little owl at the Dollar Tree and I want to add that to the center. Before I do so, I've decided to take the leftover wreath portion and cut it to make a branch. If you want to keep your crescent moon more simple, I would just skip to the next part. However, if you want to expand on your creativity and your artistic abilities, this is a great way to do so. It is more time consuming. I am leaving one edge with the vertical wire attached and then I'm cutting the other vertical wires to make two bigger branches and then I'm going to take the ends of those bigger branches, thin them out 
and create four branches at the end. And I'm gonna alter the size by cutting them a little shorter and where the vertical line is more perpendicular to the wire, I am taking my crimp tool or pliers and folding it upward a little bit to make it look more like a branch. Also, I'm taking the pliers to bend the wires a little bit so it looks more natural and organic like a real branch. At this point, I'm adding duct tape to start to make the branches. It will be wider and I'm taping around all four at the beginning up into that vertical line. After the vertical line, I'm going to start to separate it into two different sections and vary the lines a little bit and bend the wires and twist them around a little bit as I go. Then I'm going to branch them off into the four branches at the end and just keep taping around to cover all of the wire. To make the branch fit a little bit more easily, I folded a piece of tape on the very end and curved it a little bit so it went along with the natural curve of the crescent moon. Now I'm using the Just Yarn from the Dollar Tree to wrap it around. I really wanted to use the mesh tubing, however they did not have a dark brown or black like I wanted. So I'm switching to yarn which is a lot more time consuming. I'm gluing the branch down as well as I can on the crescent moon before I start to wrap it in the black yarn. It's time to start adding the yarn. To begin with, I am wrapping it around the crescent moon and the branch. And I'm just wrapping it around, wrapping it around. It's going to look kind of funny right now. The main thing is to secure it really well. After I go around both, I'm going to take the yarn in between the two and kind of go up through the crevices and just go around the orange branch. And you can see I have this much done here. And after I go up one branch, I cut the yarn and I start over on the next branch. This is what I did on all of the branches. It's time to add the flora and fauna. First, here's a quick tip. Use a black Sharpie to go over any glue that's showing. Right now I'm playing around with the placement. The plants that are at the top above the black yarn are from Hobby Lobby. All of the leaves and larger flowers were bought at the Dollar Tree. The smaller leaves came in a package in the fall section. I was just placing where I want the owl to go. Originally I had planned for two of them to be glued on and if you look at the black yarn and you see that it looks really messy in places, that's because I took them off and I'm just adding the one in the center. And I thought I would show this so you can see how I'm problem solving any issues I'm having from changing my design. For the most part, I'm using a hot glue gun. However, since it was so messy when I added the two owls, I'm using two glues. I'm using the hot glue gun and I'm using fabric tack glue, which takes longer to hold, but it has a really strong hold and I don't have to worry about it falling off. Plus it's waterproof. The little leaves came in a package from the Dollar Tree. And then the flowers and some of the other leaves came on the picks and stems that you can buy at the Dollar Tree as well. To cover up the horizontal line where the black yarn meets the tool mesh, I am gluing on a orange maple leaf made out of material to soften the edge. I'm using a green leaf to break up the bottom horizontal line on the side as well. Most of the leaves are being nestled around the owl. When adding the flowers, I'm thinking about adding them a little bit on the front, having some of the flowers kind of facing away and downward as well as on the outer side. Whereas most of the leaves I'm adding closer to the owl and one on the end of one of the branches. At this stage, I decided to take out one of the yellow red flowers and replace it with a red flower because I thought it was too much in the line. Also in place of the yellow flower, I'm adding a yellow leaf behind the red flower to still get that color there without it being too obvious. Then I added another yellow leaf over the side and for the top part I'm adding two cattails, brown cattails that will kind of extend upward along with the grass that's extending downward and the branch outwards that creates a triangle within the circular form to add more interest. Right now the twigs or the branches at the end look a little bulky and unnatural. To help curtail that, I'm taking this 
beaded twine that I found at the Dollar Tree to wrap around and to let it kind of wrap around off the edges to create a more natural and whimsical look. Last but not least, it's time to add the hanger. I already had a hanger on there. That one was extra long, so I could hang it off of one of my kitchen cabinets. Now I'm taking the tube mesh to make a smaller loop and bringing the two ends together to create a loop. Now I'm wrapping the ends around my finger and pulling the ends through the loop made by my finger. And then what we're gonna do is keep it open at the bottom where the knot is and pinch it at the top where the loop is so that way we can add it onto our wreaths. I'm opening it up at the bottom where the knot is, keeping it pinched at the top where the loop is and pulling it through. At this point, I'm planning on gluing the knot on the back side so it's hidden. Here's our finished moon wreath. As always, we appreciate you. We plan to have another wreath video out on Friday. Please think about subscribing if you haven't done so already. Have a great day. We hope to see you soon.